The growth of decentralized finance, or DeFi, is emerging as an alternative to traditional financial services, as the value of assets used in DeFi topped $100 billion in 2024, backing projections for continued market value growth. The reason why the DeFi market is growing uh, is uh, it can skip the intermediate counterparties because it can reduce the cost and time for the transaction. When it comes to the traditional finance, it has many counterparties. But when it comes to the DeFi, it can work on the code. It can drastically uh, change the transaction of the financial space. The benefit of blockchain is completely transparent. Anyone can see the blockchain. Anyone can see the transaction. Anyone can review the code. And everyone can debug the project. Revolutionizing the industry by providing a secure, transparent, and decentralized ledger for transactions, blockchain and smart contracts provide a more open and accessible financial ecosystem for the digital era. Blockchain is really the technology. Digital currency is really the digital value of the assets that are stored on a blockchain that can be identifiable. 1.3 billion people do not have access to financial services today. This is an unserved segment in the world. Blockchain is built on the principles of open source, community, shared value. No one owns each other's data. And we believe that these principles really serve well to help these people be part of the financial ecosystem. As blockchain technology continues to get smarter, advances in decentralized payment systems are enabling more efficient, cost-effective, and borderless transactions. Blockchain is empowering people by giving them direct digital ownership of their data and their assets, which is a really cool thing. So if you have a cryptographic key, you can just use it to sign a transaction and send money anywhere in the world instantly. So no one can stop you. And it really increases the sovereignty people have over their assets. And anyone who tries to stop you from doing something with your property, I think that's uh, wrong. And we see this a lot in digital payments. You have to either fill out a lot of questions or you have capital controls in some countries. But blockchain really is a way to empower people to get rid of these restrictions. If you have some assets, that you should be able to use it. So you don't have intermediary players who have to process all the transactions on your behalf. If you have an asset, you can send it to somebody instantly in a digital way, just like sending an email. So just as the internet is global, digital money on a blockchain is global too. And in modern blockchain technology, you can send money in about two or three seconds and the transaction fee would be just a few cents. That's kind of the basic idea of this technology is to really remove the barriers and create free trade and more of an open society. To modernize financial systems, many countries are now exploring central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs, which offer an analogous alternative to traditional currency. CBDC, there are three definitions. One is a digitalized, the second is issued by central bank, and third is paid like a real currency. We're helping the rural area people to secure the money because they keep the money inside their house, but after they don't need to keep inside the house and then they keep this money to the bank. While CBDCs promise enhanced financial inclusion, there are concerns regarding privacy and the potential to censor transactions user privacy, user data is top of mind with everyone around the world, you know, with all regulators. So Ramitsu, we look at ourselves and we take data privacy very seriously. And as a technology enabler, we build tools that can cater to the legal framework in which those data privacy laws are operating in. From the creation of domestic and cross-border payment solutions to the development of decentralized economic systems, Next-generation blockchain-based financial technologies are helping enterprises, universities, and governments to expand capabilities. Bakong is a central bank digital currency system that we built with the National Bank of Cambodia. And it has a digital Khmer Real, which is their local domestic currency. And then it also has a US dollar stablecoin on the system too. So from that perspective, it's not just a central bank digital currency, but it's also a digital asset platform that's run by the central bank. And the central bank could, in theory, create other assets on the same platform as well. Blockchain will increase the trust and confidence in a domestic currency. So normally, CBDC, central bank, issue this value. But in case of Bakong, the commercial bank issue this value. That's the difference. It's a standardized system, temporary resistant, and also the interoperable with other systems. The promotion of inclusive decentralized technologies leaves the foundation for next generation financial systems to evolve with the global landscape, now and into the future.
So one of the projects we work on is called Sora, and it's a new decentralized economic system for the world. So the idea is that you democratize the way you allocate money in the society and use blockchain technology to create the digital money that can work anywhere in the world 24-7 and gives people sovereignty and control over their own assets. The future development is the interoperability uh, of the blockchain. So each blockchain can update their functions. For example, some blockchains have the great function on the DeFi project. So a project can choose which uh, blockchain to use for the project. The global financial system is changing. And I think it has to change because digitization has changed society from a fundamental level. So it would be very, I would say, odd if the financial system didn't change. And you want to have a system of creating money and also allocating it in an economy. Because the way you make the allocation decisions is really deciding the type of world that you have. However, as we've seen with environmental crises, some of the allocation decisions are very short term. And so sometimes you need a different perspective when you allocate money. You need to have uh, many different people with their own idiosyncratic knowledge looking at a problem and thinking about you know how do we solve this how should we what kind of technologies do we need for the future and that's what blockchain allows us to have